Hi everyone, welcome back to Grow Your Groceries in Raised Beds and Containers. Today I'm going to share with you my top six tips for growing a kitchen garden in a raised bed. Tip number one, only plant and grow the vegetables that your family enjoys eating. Now this might seem obvious, but if you don't like zucchini, don't plant zucchini. If you love tomatoes and peppers, that's what you're going to plant in your raised bed garden. Now if you're, if you're starting gardening for the very first time, I highly recommend keeping it simple. You can always expand in your next growing season, but I recommend planting a kitchen garden, which is basically some veggies that your family will be harvesting and eating on a daily basis that you can easily access from your kitchen. And you're gonna come out and harvest as you're preparing your recipes. A super simple way to get started. The second tip for growing lots of veggies in your kitchen garden is that timing is everything. Right now the weather is warming up. We have days in the 60s and 70s and nights in the 50s. So it's a perfect time to get your warm weather veggies planted. If you're not quite that warm yet, you wanna plant some cool weather veggies, which enjoy temperatures under 75 degrees. So plant the right crops for the right season, time it right, and you're sure to grow lots of veggies in your kitchen garden. Tip three is that placement really does matter. Not only placement of your raised beds, but also placement of your plants. So first off with your raised beds, if at all possible, place them in your yard in a spot that's in full sun. Now full sun is six to eight hours a day, if you can put them in a spot with even more sun than that, that much better. The more sun, the more veggies you're going to be able to grow. In the northern hemisphere, you want to orient your raised bed facing south for maximum sun exposure. In the southern hemisphere, flip it around and face your raised bed to the north. Now let's talk plant placement. Taller veggies go in the back, such as tomatoes and zucchini. Now, zucchini isn't typically a tall vegetable, but we're actually gonna grow it up a trellis to maximize your space, make the most of all your garden real estate. And the reason why you want your tallest vegetables in the back is so they don't shade out the shorter vegetables in the front. Now, many of your taller vegetables, you're gonna be growing up a trellis, like I mentioned, to maximize your garden space. We'll be adding in these trellises as we plant. And another tall vegetable is a cucumber, which we're gonna put right here by this trellis again to grow up not out make the most of our garden real estate the taller plants i like to call the thrillers because they really just make your garden bed pop and give it that special pizzazz to kind of anchor out your garden space now in the middle here we're going to grow what i like to call the fillers they're going to kind of fill out your garden space really just make your garden bed look nice and full and that would be things like peppers some of your shorter plants. And underneath the trellis here, I'm gonna grow some more fillers. These would be things like some greens that will make the most of the space under here and actually benefit from a little bit of shade as they grow. Some of my favorite fillers are herbs. In the front of the garden bed, I'm gonna pop some basil and some dill. Absolutely beautiful additions to your kitchen garden. You'll just love coming out here and picking your own herbs for your recipes. Now along the edges of the garden bed, I like to plant some spillers, which really give the garden a pretty look and give the plants a bit more elbow room to spill over the sides. Along the front here, it's gonna be our scallop squash. Along the edges, we're gonna pop in some onions. You can also add things like strawberries, nasturtiums that, fill over the e that spill over the edge. Anything that you want that just gives your garden that beautiful look that you enjoy. Got our plants laid out, it's looking good. Let's get in here and get our hands dirty and get our veggie garden planted. The first thing we're gonna pop in is our Golden Jubilee tomato. This is from my raised bed kitchen garden seed collection, a beautiful orange slicing tomato. You're gonna absolutely love it. It's nice and sweet, very productive and a great addition to your kitchen garden. It likes full sun, it's a perfect spot for it way back here in the back of the garden bed. Now for tomatoes, they like to be planted deep to make for a nice, strong, sturdy plant. So we're digging a hole as deep as we can here. And we're gonna pull out one of our little tomato seedlings. I've got three in here. We're just gonna plant one. Just kind of gently dig it out with my shovel here. Tomato roots are very resilient and very sturdy, so you can definitely separate the seedlings without a problem. Like I mentioned, they like to be planted deep because see these teeny tiny little hairs on the soil or on the stem there. Wherever those hairs touch the soil, the plant will grow roots. So it'll be a nice, strong, sturdy plant. So definitely the deeper, the better. I like to leave the top two sets of leaves sticking out of the soil. 
and then backfill. And we did already add fertilizer and compost to our garden bed last week when we topped it off. Hopefully you caught that video. So we're not going to add any additional fertilizer to the soil at this point in time. So it's very easy to get your tomato planted. There it is. We got our first plant in. So let's install our tomato cage. Tomato is a tall vining vegetable. It needs a really strong support. This one's going to do the trick. It's going to look really pretty too. Next, we're going to pop in our zucchini squash. We love zucchini. It's delicious on the grill. It's a super productive vegetable. I like to call it a power producer to plant in your kitchen garden. Now, most people don't grow zucchini vertically, but I really like to do that because it saves space. Zucchini can be a huge space hog. So we'll grow it up a tomato trellis and just train it up the trellis as it grows. Now, it's a good idea to grow your squash in something like this. This is a cow pot. It dissolves very easily in the soil. Zucchini and squash don't like to have their roots disturbed, so this way it really minimizes the root disturbance. You don't even have to remove it from the cow pot. You just put it in the planting hole here, cover it with soil. It will break down over the growing season and won't restrict the roots. So we're gonna pop in a shorter version of the tomato cage here. And as the plant grows, we'll train it up through the trellis. It'll make a really nice, beautiful, vertical statement here in the garden. Really important thrillers to plant in your kitchen garden are flowers. You gotta plant for the pollinators. So we're gonna plant some amazing thrillers in the back here, some sunflowers and zinnias. These are both from my raised bed kitchen garden seed collection, which you can grab for 20% off with the code kitchen garden for CaliKimGardenAndHome.com. These are gray striped sunflowers, very large, eight to 10 foot tall, grow super easily from seed. So we're gonna drop some in here about every six inches or so. They're gonna be a beautiful backdrop to the garden and will bring the pollinators in like crazy. They love the warm temperatures. You're gonna just absolutely love having these beautiful sunny sunflowers in your garden. We're also gonna pop in some California giant zinnias in between the sunflowers. These are huge pollinator attractors, but first I'm just gonna poke the sunflower seeds down into the soil, maybe in half an inch or so. These germinate very, very quickly in warm temperatures. Then we'll pop in our little zinnia seedlings right in between them. And these are multicolored zinnias. They're tall, they're beautiful, and the pollinators absolutely love them. I'm really enjoying how the garden bed has taken shape. So exciting to get my veggies in. So in the middle here, I'm gonna plant my cucumber. That's another thriller. It's gonna grow up and over this trellis. You can get all the instructions for making this trellis in my raised bed gardening book. It's a really quick, simple, inexpensive and sturdy trellis for your veggies. Perfect for this cucumber. So just dug a hole for the cucumber, popped it in, put a tag on it. Now along the edge of the trellis here, the bottom of the trellis, we're also gonna plant some Boston pickling cucumbers from my raised bed kitchen garden seed collection. It's nice to plant veggies at different stages, one from a transplant and then plant some seeds. That way you don't have all your vegetables ready to harvest at once. There's probably only so many cucumbers your family can eat all in one sitting. So this kind of spreads the harvest out. So we'll pop the seeds in, kind of poke them down. And I'm planting the seeds right along the drip emitter here. So they get the water they need to grow and sprout. And if your weather is nice and warm in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, you should see them germinate within just a couple of days. The Boston pickling is a really beautiful pickling cucumber, but also delicious for slicing and fresh eating. We got our thrillers planted. Now it's time to plant our fillers to really fill out the rest of this raised bed. And by the way, this raised bed is a four by eight space. Super easy to build yourself. The build is in my raised bed gardening book, and you can also see it on last year's raised bed garden series. So the peppers make really, really nice fillers. You can see I already have some peppers in here. These are peppers I overwintered. They'll be leafing out again soon since the weather is warming up. But this is an absolutely beautiful pepper seedling. I think it's my most favorite one that I've grown this year and it's a California wonder from the raised bed kitchen garden seed collection there's 15 varieties in there for your kitchen garden again we're gonna place the cow pot right in the soil it's already starting to break down 
so it's well on its way to uh, breaking down here over the growing season. Just place it in the hole. You want to plant peppers at about soil level and they can actually be planted fairly close together within six inches or so of another pepper. Then we'll just backfill it, cover it with soil, pop in our tag and we're good to go with the pepper. Peppers do need some support because they get very heavy when they're loaded down with veggies. So here I'm just using one of the smaller tomato cages, which you can grab from the garden center. It's plenty uh, big enough for a pepper. Then it's always good to install your trellises when you plant so you don't damage the plant by installing them later. And one reason why peppers like to grow close together is because they can kind of shade the pepper fruits themselves from something called sun scald, and that way it protects the peppers from the hot sun. A huge advantage to growing in raised beds is it saves your back and your knees. You can sit on the edge, less bending over, and more fun in the garden. In the front here, I'm gonna plant some more fillers. Plant yourself a little herb garden. Whatever herbs your family loves to eat. We love basil, so I'm gonna plant a couple different kinds of basil. This is purple basil from my herb garden seed collection. Just dig a hole, put the cow pot in, cover it up, couldn't be easier. And on the other side here, I'm going to pop in some uh, Prospera basil. This is actually from my Grow Your Groceries with Kelly Kim April subscription box. It's a pizza garden box. It's a nice compact size of basil and it's also disease resistant to something called downy mildew, which um, basil is very susceptible to, which can kill the plant. Such beautiful, nicely cupped leaves. Can't wait to try this on our pizza. Now in the middle here, I'm gonna plant some Italian large leaf basil seeds. Again, so we have basil ready to harvest at different times throughout the growing season. Tiny little seeds, but you can direct sow these right in the garden in warm temperatures. I'm gonna place them right along the drip emitters. Just kind of give the seeds a nice little sprinkle. Then we can always thin them out as they grow. But in my opinion, you can never have too much basil in the garden. Now it's time for some greens to fill in the space under this trellis. And the reason why I really enjoy planting the greens down here is because as the cucumber grows up and over the trellis, it will shade the greens from the summer heat, which is just perfect. So first off, we're gonna plant here some bronze mignette, a plant that I started from seed. Again, we're gonna have uh, plants at different stages of growth. We'll plant seeds in the ground as well as the plants, so we won't have so much lettuce to harvest at once. Dig a hole, cover it up. We've got some beautiful lettuce growing already. Now let's get some seeds planted. We'll do some more bronze mignette seeds. Seeds are in my raised bed kitchen garden seed collection. I love this lettuce, it's beautiful red tinged leaves, and it always makes a beautiful, tasty, colorful addition to a salad. Lettuce is super easy to plant. Just pour the seeds in your, into your hand. I'm gonna sprinkle it right along the drip hose here. Just lightly sprinkle it about halfway down. So we'll have a couple little rows of lettuce. Now lettuce needs light to germinate so you don't even have to cover it. Just press it down and you are good to go. Now I love a lot of variety in our salads. Now we're gonna plant some specialty greens for my specialty green seed collection. You actually get this collection for free this week. When you use the code Kitchen Garden, you get 20% off and get a free specialty green selection collection too. Now we're gonna plant the Tatsoi mustard greens. Love these, you guys are gonna absolutely love them too. It's a beautiful little kind of, it's called spoon mustard. Has a nice cupped leaf and a super tasty addition to the salad. Again, just sprinkle it along the drip hose here. Lightly cover it up. Can't wait till these things sprout. Oh, they're just so delicious. One more row of specialty greens here. One of my very favorite all-time greens is endive. Now, one reason why I love planting the specialty greens is they're so hard to find in the grocery store, if you can even find them at all, but they're so beautiful and make such a nice, tasty addition to your salad. But you could plant all types of greens under the trellis here. You could do kale, you could do chard. Really the sky's the limit with greens, so just plant whatever your greens your family enjoys. Now for the spillers that are gonna spill over the side of the garden bed here. Really excited about how things are taking shape. Can't wait to eat these veggies. One of my favorite spillers is scallop squash. This is a beautiful green tint scallop squash is called. Such a pretty vegetable. 
tender, delicious, so tasty on the grill. I'm gonna plant these seeds about, about six inches or so apart, drop them next to a drip emitter hose. You can also start these seeds indoors about four to six weeks before you put them outside. But right now it's warm enough to plant them directly from seed. Just pop them right in the soil, about a half inch or so deep. Love the warm weather. They should germinate in about a week or so. We'll be harvesting them probably in about six to eight weeks. They grow very, very fast. Along the edge here, we're gonna plant our onions. Now, I personally don't have tons of garden space to devote to onions. So what I like to do is just kind of tuck them in around my garden beds to save on space, but still have tons of delicious onions to grow. And these are Bianco DiMaggio onions from my onion seed collection. They're really nice bulbing onions. If you don't have time to plant onions from seed, they do take a while to grow from seed to harvest. You can always plant some bunching onions, which are a non-bulbing type of onion and a lot quicker to harvest. So onions are super easy to plant. I'm just gonna break apart the little seedlings. They're very, very sturdy seedlings. And you don't wanna plant them too deep. You want the white part of the onion to show. Just kind of tuck the roots down in there. And I'll plant these about every six inches or so, right next to the drip emitter. Got some really nice roots going on here. These are gonna just be delicious onions to harvest in my kitchen garden. For more info on how to plant onions from seed, go back and watch the Grow Your Grocery series so you know what varieties will grow best in your area. Now you notice the onions are kind of falling over just a little bit. I'm gonna pack just a little bit more soil around the roots. But as soon as the roots get established and really take hold in the soil, they'll be standing up nice and tall and the bulbs will start growing very nicely. Tip number four for growing lots of veggies in your kitchen garden in raised beds is to keep it as close to water as you can. The closer the better because consistent watering is the key to a productive garden. It's either close to a hose bib or bring water to your garden with drip irrigation. You can see here how I have drip irrigation hoses snaking through my watering bed. Really takes the guesswork out of it, saves me a ton of time. And this, these hoses have tiny little drip emitters built into them. The water comes out the drip emitters and gets to the roots of the plants where it needs it the most. So I know you might feel intimidated if you've never installed drip irrigation. It's actually very simple to do. I'll put a link to our drip irrigation playlist so you know exactly how to get it installed for your raised beds. Tip number five is to feed your garden regularly, both at planting time and throughout the growing season. Now we already added a lot of fertilizers to our garden bed when we topped it off. Those are all what's called time release fertilizers, the nutrients released to the veggies over a couple of month time period. But we're also gonna fertilize our veggies right now with some water soluble quick release fertilizers so the nutrients are readily available to the plants. And I like to like make a little plant cocktail when I'm first starting out. And I use a combination here of the Alaska fish fertilizer. Love this fertilizer, it's got lots of good organic nutrients in it. Very natural way to feed your plants. It has a very high level of nitrogen here. That's this first number on the bottle. And what nitrogen does, it's a very important nutrients for your plants when they're first planted to get them established and help them grow lots of good green leaves on it. So this is my first go-to fertilizer. It's readily available at most garden centers. The second one that I've loved, I've used for years, is the Vermistera Vitality. This is made from earthworm castings. It's in liquid form and very easily absorbed by the plants. It really does help with the plants health and growth. It's got some natural root hormones in it, so it really helps those roots get established and gets your plants off to a great start for the growing season. You can grab some of the Vermistera Vitality over at vermistera.com and use the code CALIKIM for 10% off. Now I'm just going to mix up my little plant cocktail here, and I really like to feed my plants in my raised bed about every three to four weeks throughout the growing season. You can find my recommended fertilizer or feeding schedule in my book on raised bed gardening over at CaliKimGardenAndHome.com. So we're just get, gonna give them all a nice little soil drench here. I'm gonna water at the base of the plants. So it gets down to the roots to really help kick that root development. Kind of let the water soak in. Then water some more till they get a nice good soil drenching. So I'm just gonna go around the garden and water all my plants. It's just so much fun to be out here today. 
knowing that my veggies are getting going here in my raised bed. Tip number six for growing lots of veggies in your kitchen garden in raised beds is mulch. Now I like to use shredded leaves for mulch or shredded straw. And the reason why mulch is important is because it really helps conserve the moisture in your soil, helps protect your plants from the heat or from the cold and it just helps your veggies grow so much better. This is organic matter that will break down in time into the soil and helps with your soil aeration as well. So I'm just spreading a very light layer at first, especially where I planted the seeds. And then I can, uh, throughout the growing season, add a couple inches more of shredded leaves to really help protect the soil from water evaporation in the heat of the summer. It's been a lot of work, but it sure feels good to get the raised bed planted. Thanks for hanging in there with me. And remember at the beginning of the video when I said plant the foods that you love, I think it would be a lot of fun if you shared the foods that you love that you're going to be planting in your raised beds. And if you've decided today to build yourself some raised beds, let me know that too. I would love to hear about it. Head over to CaliKimGardenHome.com. You're going to want to grab the First Time Gardener Raised Bed Gardening. It's got the kitchen garden planting plan, raised bed builds, DIY solar recipes, how to build your trellises. It's all here for you along with my raised bed garden kitchen seed collection. 20% off with the code KitchenGarden and you get a free specialty seed collection with your order. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.